This podcast is part of the Batman Universe Podcast Network, hosted by the BatmanUniverse.net. Check out everything related to Batman and the entire Bat family at the BatmanUniverse.net, including news and original content related to comics, movies, television, merchandise, video games, and more. Also, check out some of the other unique podcasts that TBU has to offer. Consider supporting this podcast by becoming a patron on Patreon. Even $1 can go a long way in supporting this content that you enjoy. Look for a link over at thebatmanuniverse.net to offer your support now. And now, on with the show. Hello, and welcome to a special edition of Batman Universe's Podcasts. We've just had some pretty groundbreaking news about DC having a lot of restructuring and layoffs and Theo and I have been chatting and thinking about that so we wanted to record some quick reaction thoughts. Theo, what are your first impressions about these layoffs? Who's laid off and what do you think it means? I mean, jokingly, you know, I I, I, I may want to say, you know, Rob Lightfield was right. You know, he 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 mentioned things were going to be changing at DC, and it's like we're finally getting them. Uh, but seriously, you know, this this is some um, massive news, especially when you see some of the names that's that have been mentioned uh, in the various reports. Um, you know, we we got the typical bleeding cool article to drop first, and you know, you can always take that with a grain of salt uh but when you know you start seeing other sites starting to drop the the same thing the same mention the same rumors and then you finally get the piece that came out from the uh the hollywood the hollywood reporter uh yeah that's some that's some real stuff there and Variety, too. So originally, yeah, it was some pretty, I would say, sketchy sources, but it's quickly been backed up by real reporters who have real access. And I think that it is quite true that we're losing a lot of senior executives, including the ones that I know about who I can connect uh, work with or personality with are Bob Harris, Andy Curry. Bobby Chase, and Brian Cunningham. Uh, Bob, Yeah, Bob Harris is currently the editor-in-chief. Bobby Chase is director of digital strategy and has been overseeing a lot of the young adult novel strategy. Brian Cunningham, I actually can't remember what he does. Andy Khoury's done a lot of the... He's done a lot of editing for major titles in the last 20 years, and he's also done a lot with... The Vertigo, and I think Black Label. I'm not sure if he's directly connected to Black Label, but I think he has been. Well, I I think, and I think for me, the big name that's out there too. Again, if this is all, if this is all true, it's Mark Doyle. You know who? Oh yeah, who's very much connected to Black Label. Correct. You know, so if he, I mean, I mean, and with the exception of of you know the the mishap of. Batman damned, you know, Black Label, you know, and some of the guys mentioned it on the Discord. Black Label has been pretty successful for DC, you know, and, and he got the axe as well, according to the reports. You know, that, that that there for me is probably the most surprising of the releases, uh, you know, the one that I would have at least desired to see as well. So I have two basic interpretive frameworks that I can put over this. The first one is my own, which is that I think this is extremely predictable. Uh, DC was bought, Warner Brothers in general, is undergoing 600 layoffs in the next week or so. So this is part of an overall thing. It's not targeting DC at all. Um, AT&T bought Warner Brothers, including DC, about a year ago, maybe a little bit more. And... They've been letting it run, maybe trying some experiments, but I think that seeing what they think works and then trying to trim things they don't think work and institute their own things that they think will work better is normal for an acquisition of this size. I honestly am a little surprised it took so long, but I think the pandemic 
they wanted to see what they could do to stabilize the situation in the uncertain times. But they're like, with the pandemic, they're losing a lot of revenue. So they need to make cuts and start the things that they think will work better now so they can get traction for a more normal economy later. So that's my personal perspective. Um, Another perspective I've seen from people who are creators, but not directly connected to DC or Warner Brothers, is that... AT&T has a lot of financial liability, and so they're just cutting the people with the biggest salaries. I think there's probably some merit to that. I mean, I'm certain that saving costs is definitely part of what they're doing. I just think that it's also extremely predictable. As I said, I, I really don't... I'm kind of surprised it took this long. I think that a massive restructuring of a very major prod uh, property that AT&T bought was always going to happen. What do you think about those two frameworks? Well, you, oh, well, I, I agree. You know, at the point D, at the point AT&T bought Warner Brothers, you knew that changes changes were going to come. I think, I think the pandemic exacerbated those changes and yeah it, it, it was delayed because they wanted to see some type of stabilization because of how how crazy the country had gotten uh, as a result of the pandemic but i, I it, anyone anyone paying attention knew that changes were going to be coming to not just to dc but to warner brothers as a whole um you know and Anyone again paying attention as soon as they announced HBO Max, you knew that um, DC Universe was dead in the water, you know, and we see those changes happen with all of the once DCU exclusive now moving over to either the CW or, excuse me, either the CW or uh, HBO Max. And, you know, we see that they've removed the yearly subscription uh, option for getting membership. So you, you knew these changes were going to come. Um, and I think, honestly, as much, I mean, okay, I've been a DC Universe subscriber since day one. As soon so as it was I, open, yearly subscription, I upped my yearly subscription the next year. I'm committed to it. I love the service, mostly because of the comics. I actually don't care, and I don't watch most of their original offerings or even their old offerings, although I'm very excited about Krypton this week. I actually think that might drop tomorrow. But anyway, this is to say I have no animosity. I love DC Universe, but it is a redundant streaming service. I mean, you don't see Netflix having, like, you know, it didn't spin off its Marvel Universe into, you know, Netflix Marvel Universe with its own portal or anything it was still part of netflix i think hbo max or whatever it ends up being called i think it probably will stick with hbo max for now but i just don't think that's a great i don't think that's a great name name. yeah but that's irrelevant but it is clearly the primary streaming service that wb and at&t want to push and dc universe is irrelevant could it be folded in as a tier maybe quite possibly could it just be dissolved and everything be acquired by HBO Max? Also quite possible. Yep. But I think it's a sensible thing. I don't think it's any animosity towards DC. I think DC Universe was a fun idea, but honestly, <sighs> and, and, Marvel doesn't have something similar, and Marvel is more in the public eye. So I think that its days were numbered even from its beginning. It's just not the kind of idea that I think really could be long-term. And, and and I know you and I have said it a few times. I, I and I've kind of gotten on that bandwagon, bandwagon as well. Is in the end, DC Universe just becomes DC's equivalent of Marvel Unlimited. And, and I would love A-O- that. I would still I subscribe. A O K. Yes. So would I. And I would be A O K with that, even if it means you know up in the price, making it a little bit more similar to what Marvel charges. Um, but they got to increase. They got to increase the 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 selections. They got to increase the uh, the library. Yeah, get get um, get Vertigo on there. Get your Wildstorm on there. 
maybe bump it up to what Marvel's standard is, which is six-month delay, so it's no longer a year for new comics. I think all these are reasonable things for a reasonable increase in price. Um, but that sort of leads to the next question. What does this mean for us at the Batman universe? What does this mean for Batman comics? Well, I, I mean, for the Batman universe, I don't see things changing now. I mean, yeah, I mean, Batman's never changing. going away. They're not going right. to like all this stuff about, oh, they're going to sell Batman. They're going to license Batman. Mm-hmm. They're going to. No. no, everyone no. knows what happened to Marvel no. with Spider-Man and the X-Men. DC and AT&T are not that dumb. Even if AT&T no. has some problems, it's not going to sell DC. It's not going to sell Batman. They get no. too much money from it. It's it won't happen. So we're going to stay here. All it, it all busy all business savvy individuals know that when AT&T and back then when Disney uh when AT&T bought Warner Brothers, which included DC, they knew that DC Comics was in the red. But wasn't in the red was the intellectual properties that came along with DC Comics. You know, the the, the publishing publishing side, yeah, it, it's always been bleed money, and it's the same case with Marvel. But Disney's gonna hold up Marvel, and just like just like that, AT and T's gonna hold up. DC because they know that those those IPs, whether it's Batman, whether it's Superman, whether it's Supergirl, all these shows that are on the CW that they're bringing on to HBO Max, that's money. That's where the money is for them. And it, it if if somebody at Warner Brothers was ever stupid enough to put DC up for sale, AT and T would have a fit and send that person packing uh, in a New York second. So that's never going to happen. Now, could we possibly see comics going digital? I don't know. I would hope not. You know, I think they are time. going to think about how they do digital. I think DC Universe was probably a good pilot, and they'll see if they can make a subscription model work. They also have that new digital first program where there's every day a new character in these like really easy to digest stories, you know, re- very new reader friendly stories. Um, I think that's been kind of mixed in terms of long term fans. I don't like the Batman line, even though it's had good stories. But the Superman line, we've had one author for most of it, and it's been this story where every story is a one and done, but there's these threads. And I think that model may come back for comics. I think. I can really see this this experiment they've been doing both with the Walmart giants and the the hundred page and eighty page giants, where it's an anthology approach, similar to what they do with manga. And people have been you know pitching this for years, but I can I could really see them working on different strategies to try and get their IP consistently in front of the public, but in a more cost effective way. We could and we could also possibly see again. Going from digital first directly to trade paperbacks and graphic. Absolutely, novels. yeah. And you know, I would, I wouldn't mind that because the digital first is priced. I mean, a, a dollar an issue, even if the issues are just sixteen pages. Those are sixteen full pages. That's a much better deal in terms of story content than you're getting for, uh, you know, four dollars for twenty-two pages. I mean, that's that's a no-brainer in terms of if you're just talking about getting what you pay for. And then getting the money, and if you want it in a hard copy, you can wait for the trades. Um, I, I just think that's a really good idea. Now, this is we have no inf- inside information. We're just spitballing here. But I think there are lots of options for DC to change in a profitable way that could also be fun for us as consumers. Yeah, it 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 will it would be tough for me if this ends up coming to fruition again. You know, as someone who's collected comics since he was nine years old, you know, that would be a, a, a change that will be very hard to come around to. But again, we don't know. It's all conjecture right now. You know, we're, we're yeah. just drawing stuff against the wall to see. And I think that no matter stay, how it home. works, both of us agree, Batman is always going to be something that we can collect. The, the way we collect it may change. 
Um, the size of the comic, the price of the comic, those will change. Hopefully for the better. Currently, comics are priced completely unreasonably. So I actually think this could be good in terms of price. But I think Batman, we're, we're Batman Universe people because Batman is such a universal and great character. He's not going to stop being published. We're going to be able to get him somehow. Agreed. So let's talk about the one thing that we didn't mention early when we when we when we discussed the 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 moves from Warner Brothers at DC, and you know there were a few stories, um, you know, Bleeding Cool being one of them, that also actually mentioned the fact that you know some of these changes will also see Jim Lee uh, transitioning to a new role uh, within the company, not necessarily losing the, the publisher title, but moving from the publisher role and doing other things at the company. What are your thoughts on that? The more reputable sources are saying that. So I think that he probably won't be called publisher or be involved in the day-to-day -day publishing of the comics like he has been. But, I mean, honestly, we've both been saying this is very likely to happen. At the very least, they were going to add somebody. And moving him to this, I think, makes a lot of sense because Jim Lee's not a business guy. I mean, Image Comics no. didn't do well as a business until he left. Um, he's an artist, and he, he's kind of a people person. My, my impression of him is that people like him, you know? So what his new position has been described as is you know, overseeing or encouraging DC's brand integration with other things or getting the characters, getting the stories in other places. I think that makes perfect sense for him. It means he can probably do art and, and have that art be used as marketing or something. And he won't try and do <laughs> interiors anymore, which I think he should never try to do interiors again. Um, and the people we're hearing are moving into a more overseeing publication role are people like Marie Javins, who is currently one of the big uh, VPs and also an editor for, I think, the Justice League titles. And I really like Marie Javins. I think she's a good pick. She's clearly a business person, works well with people, um, has done, overseen a lot of good work. So I, I think that's a good move. And I think I've heard other things that they're, they're pushing for a more business-oriented type of guy in that position. I think that's good. I hope that whoever it is it is is better at the business end than either uh, Jim Lee or Dan Didio. Dan Didio's thing was basically he was both a hype man and also trying to focus negative attention away from the creators, which he wasn't very good at because he didn't have the maturity to really focus it on himself. Right. Um, so I, I just hope that they put someone who, who is a solid business guy in charge of it and, and really focuses on professionalism, providing a good working environment, um, providing a good salary for the creatives, and also figuring out how to get enough products sold so that they can increase that salary without being in the red and also give the consumers a better product for, for less money because it's, it's currently just ridiculous the, the financial situation for both the creators and the fans is ridiculous it's, it's not a good thing and i think it needs some disruption so i think a good good business guy could do that so i i mean as you can tell i'm much more positive on this than a lot of people i do think it's going to hurt and i want to be clear even though i may personally not like some of the people who are losing their jobs i didn't want them to lose their jobs and, and be destitute i hope they have good success i hope they find a new position and um I, I I don't wish any harm on them. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and you know, and I've and I've I've said many times, and I still believe today. You know that you know Bob Harris of all the names that's been mentioned as those being let go, Bob Harris was the one that you know I've always uh, promoted happening um, during these times. However, yeah, you know. What, what, what's going on with the pandemic and everything, you know, yeah, it's going to be tough, you know, and I wish, I wish him and everyone else well. Um, but, you know, to kind of go back on what you were saying with regards to Jim Lee and, and the transitioning of the roles, I can, I can almost wonder, and it, and it might be something that they might be looking at is creating more of a, 
models similar to what's at um, Marvel, where there actually is an editor in chief who actually is the editor in chief. You know, we know that you know in the in the in the Dan Didio era, you know, he basically had that role, even though he was publisher. He, uh, he well, I mean, he transitioned of, from editor in chief to publisher, right. and he and he kind of kept that those duties along with him. With Bob Harris not doing much editoring, uh, well, I mean, that's the big mystery because Bob Harris doesn't do interviews, so we don't know what he did. True. Um, so maybe they're they're setting up a similar model. You know, I would like to see Jim Lee kind of have you know a role similar to what. Uh, Jeff Johns did as far as, you know, migrating back and forth through the different genres from TV to movies and to the comics and, and not totally have to worry about doing the comics um, full time, you know, and having, having, having these guys, you know, doing the day to day operations of the publishing of the books and, 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 moving the company along in that fashion. So it, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, you know, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of shock. And I think um, another thing that we haven't talked about is a lot of these people have been with DC for at least 20 years. You know, some of them 10 years, some of them longer. And all of them have been in comics for like 40 years. Um, maybe 30 years. But comics is a small pool of people who work in it. And one of the big problems, and we've seen this in the Warren Ellis news and, and other people who have been, you know, accused of wrongdoing or just immature behavior. And let me be clear, a hundred percent condemn the victimization, the manipulation and all these things that have been alleged. Um, I make no comment on what really happened because I wasn't there, but that kind of behavior, I a hundred percent condemn. But I think that kind of behavior is enabled by the fact that comics is so small. And so it functions as a personal, uh, almost a cult of personality network instead of a professional organization. And so much of that is because these people have been here forever. And the only way to get in is being a friend of theirs, you know? So I think that as destructive as this is, we could see an influx of new people as they develop new hiring practices. Because... There's no way DC and Warner Brothers and AT&T are just going to keep all the same creative teams. These relationships are going to be different. They're going to look for new people. They're going to hopefully look for successful writers. I think DC has been trying to do that, but they haven't been super successful with their TV um, writers that they've pulled. So I think we're going to... Although they have been successful with some of their other authors uh from from other genres oh yeah absolutely um Fox i think we're with Anki jemison mm -hmm. uh, uh meg cabot for black carry ignite sarah coon was it sarah coon who did uh the shadow of the batgirl i don't know i mean the ya stuff of course they've had a lot of big name authors um but yeah as you say nk jemison is uh, adult science fiction um, over at Marvel, they've got you know Todd Nahisi Coates, who who's you know, big known for his essays, and he's been writing Captain America and Black okay. Panther. And like, oh, his his Black Panther and Captain America are both wonderful. So I mean, I think we'll see more kinds of things like that, getting you know recognizable names and you know training them up, and maybe even doing sort of what Scott Snyder tried to do with the writing workshop, but wasn't really successful, as someone pointed out. If you ever bought those new talent showcases, how many of those people actually went on to get an ongoing series? It was like 10% of those people. It didn't work. It didn't create new talent for DC to take advantage of. Um, so I think we're going to see more efforts like that, but hopefully done in a more successful way. Um, so I think that, again, I do not wish to to rejoice or or wish harm on any of these people who are losing their jobs and it is very sad but i do think that there is a chance that we might have some disruption that will bring in new talent in an energizing way so that's another aspect i wanted to consider a little bit and if that happens you know the dc will be better for it absolutely well did you have any uh last thoughts on this um 
big news that we're we're just chatting about? Yeah, fans do not panic. Yes, Tom King is not going anywhere. Scott Snyder is not going anywhere. You know, our, the creators are staying the same. Um, we may see some different directions. You know, with regards to continuity but hey we don't know we we don't know because right now everything is still up in the air we we, we've got some confirmations on on who's leaving and who's not but in the end you know it's all a waiting game for us so you know breathe take a few breaths i'm gonna take a few breaths and probably have a drink as well and remember this is the batman universe batman's not going anywhere so we're not going anywhere either. We'll be here with you. So everybody, follow Theo's advice. Take those breaths. Get that beverage, whatever it is. And we'll be here with more Batman reviews, comics, and editorials. Thanks for listening. See you, folks.